Diamat channel, welcome. Right, today's a short video. Just want to share something I've got about the tools we use for annealing. Um, this channel is not just me sitting here teaching what I learned to make jewelry, trying to get everyone to do everything the way I do it. It's not at all like that. It's me sharing my experience of being a jeweler. And by that, I mean, we're always learning. Like anyone who's taken on the endeavor to learn to make jewelry will know it's a constant uphill battle to try and acquire new skills and new understandings and new like uh, new ways to do things. Now, like, always learning. So um, it's not just me teaching what I already know. It's also me sharing uh, how, things I continue to learn as well. So that's what this channel's about. So uh, if you like that kind of stuff, click like and subscribe and all that. Um, I'll get into it when I said thank you to new patrons. We got uh, I got a few last few days. Thank you very much, guys. We got Lucas Petula, Keith Allen, Mihai Ungurianu, Andrea Coran. Israel, Israeli, and Andrea Evans. Thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate becoming patrons. Without the patron support, this channel will be impossible to continue. So I really appreciate all the patrons. Very grateful, so I enjoy making the videos, but it's a lot of work, it's a lot of time to do them. So uh, yeah, with the patronship, uh, yeah, it really genuinely does enable me to continue making them. So annealing, yeah, I've got this long bit of wire, bit square wire. It's too long, way too long for my charcoal block. So I was looking around, I thought, what else can I do to extend my annealing surface area? So out on the balcony, I've got a few bricks. I thought, okay, perfect. I've just got a brick. So I've been heating it up and experimenting with it. I did do an anneal on it as well. It works fine. Just as a bit of an experiment, I've got it really hot just there. You can see there's a little bit of a melty patch. As I expected, like oxypropane gets really, really hot. You can melt stone with these quite a lot. Uh, stone melts, by the way. Anyone who's, well, think of a volcano going off, all that molten lava, that's melted rock, basically. Uh, so yeah, as I expected, you can melt it. So it's not gonna be good for platinum, but for silver annealing, no problem at all. So I just want to say, don't worry about what jewelry suppliers tell you you've got to have, or like jewelry, like beginner jewelers starter kits. You can be a bit open-minded and just come up with your own solution. So if you haven't got, or you can't get a charcoal block, don't worry about special specific tools for jewelers, soldering block, don't like these, charcoal block, overpriced. Uh, you probably could, if you're starting out, do all your silver soldering on a brick from your local hardware store or just from out in the garden or wherever you find one. So yeah, there you go. Keep an open mind. Don't worry about what people say you've got to have. You can get by with alternative things. A brick. <laughs> so to give you a bit of extra info, I have mentioned this on the channel before, but when I'm annealing extra long bits of wire, a lot of jewellery Jewelers teachers at college used to say to do this. I don't like it. They used to talk about coiling it up. But this bit of metal is quite thick. That's still like over two mil wide. It's a bit difficult to coil it up. And I think it's a shame to even thin wire, you coil it up. You, when you uncoil it, it gets all twisted and you can't anne anneal things evenly. So what I do is I will hold it with these spring tweezers, one end. Let me anneal that end first. Silver's quite easy to anneal, only cherry red, like what I just did, that was annealed. Have your flame going along the piece and then you're getting the maximum benefit of your, all the heat from your flame. If you hold it that way, you're just, you're annealing it, but you're wasting a lot of the flame heat. You'll probably do a quicker, better job holding it along the piece. So keep it moving. I'm just waiting for it to get kind of cherry red. And the gas is, don't tell me my gas is running out. So yeah, I'm holding it in the spring tweezers, just pulling it along. You can always quickly go over it a second time. I'll get it balanced on there. That's a red hot bit of metal, well, almost red hot bit of metal. So leave it there a little bit until it's cooled down a touch. Uh, might even blow on it. Um, be careful when you're picking it up, obviously, because uh, it might even when things are really long. If it's really long, still a bit heavy, might be worth trying to grab it from two positions and working with it like that. I would get it cooled down. If you're in a rush and you really want to get it in the acid or whatever, I would cool it down with water first and then carefully put it in the acid. You don't want to having to be playing games, balancing red up bits of metal and open containers of dangerous corrosive chemicals. Anyway, do what you gotta do. That's just my little two cents on annealing and uh, using a brick, it's extending your annealing work area. Yeah, whatever.